Pokemon X has been saved by a ROM hack that fixes every issue you and I ever had with it. Pokemon have been modified, Megas are super accessible, and the game is actually hard. I mean, look at Wolfric's team and what it used to be, and look at it now. What the f I wanted to complete a challenge run of it. Permadeath, no items in battle, one encounter per route, and a ban on weather and setup moves. This is Chespin. We're gonna name him Meme after a member of our Twitch chat, Dream Meme. Meme was going to be the centerpiece for our run here. You get a free Swablu encounter on the first technical route, which is cool. Yeah, Meme got pecked a couple times, but Luke would join our squad and become our second team member. Next, a custom patch of grass in our hometown, filled with a variety of cool Pokemon. Elekid, Madgeby. Okay, shup it. Ghost normal in this hack, I was reasonably confident we'd get some contributions out of this guy. Finally, our starter pack concluded with Bunnelby, Corfish, and... Oh, Lettuce. Now, one interesting mechanic of this game is that there are Pokemon scattered throughout the region that you can trade for that don't have specific requests. This means if I get a garbage encounter, I can swap it out for any of Numel, Sharpedo, Joltik, or Eevee. So I did contemplate swapping Raymond out for Numel, the first trade Pokemon available. Absolutely not. This monkey was my ride or die now. Raymond was the Tim Duncan to my Greg Popovich, the Pikachu to my Ash Ketchum. I was gonna make this work no matter what. I then beat like 10 extra trainers so I could fish for an encounter on this extra route before Viola. I was hoping for my guy Gumi. We got a goldfish instead, which was fine. Caesus, as we refer to the king of the seven seas, was going to be all right with lightning rod. Seven encounters, Viola packing a full team of six. I asked our guy Raymond to be our Jamal Crawford and come off the bench for this one. We were going to need every other encounter to step up to capture our first gym badge. We conquered the opening dwevel, but not before our health barreled down below 50%. Surskit was pretty easily checked by Meme and invited out Larvesta, who aspired to acrobatics our starter. Caesus was having none of that, as our goldfish obliterated the bug. And because technically Caesus is weak to electric types, Joltik came out next. Swablu chugged a struggle bug before Meme leech seeded it, allowing me to pivot infinitely between Swablu and Caesus as it slowly passed away. Swadloon was now on the floor, looking grumpier than ever. We pecked it, it died, we moved. The final Pokemon was out, the Vion. I hit it with one peck, tail whipped with Caesus, and tried to peck just one more time. Don't f kill me, please. Thank you. Guaranteed Electro Web, right? Thank you. Sweet. One whole badge. I'm sure this will stay this easy. In Lumios, Derek Shepard passed me a little Hoenn starter of my choice. I love the gecko and obviously Swampert's dope, but I decided to rock with Blaziken. I was going to make Colonel Sanders proud, chefing up strats with the spicy chicken. The next major stop was in Glittering Cave. We added a few more friends along the way, including Venipede, Spoink, Golbat, Furfru, and Helioptile, as well as the insane trio of Feebas, Togetic, and Snorlax. But at Glittering Cave, I was out to find a very specific new friend. You know those little blob encounters that guard the path to the room in the back of this cave? They're all pretty brutal encounters, including Solrock, Lunatone, and Kangaskhan. No, I wanted the encounters from the back room, with a chance for Ferrisseed or Aerodactyl, and technically Woobat, but if we don't acknowledge bad potential outcomes, then they can't happen. And so, I ran in and out of the cave for an hour trying to find a clear path to the back room. It was starting to feel grim, and I almost conceded defeat to the cave. Still, I ran it a few extra times, and I hit my breaking point. Are we sure this is possible? Yes. See? For sure. <laughs> yes! I was so close to giving up. Yeah, so we smashed some flare grunts and root to getting our encounter. We did this all for f***ing Woobat. Hell yeah, brother. Insane work. One hour of delaying the encounter for Woobat, who would never leave the box. This was epic. This was my personal Darko Milicic. Seriously, this was a mod built to set up some Calm Minds and Agilities or whatever, and I had set up moves banned. At the end of this cave, we found maybe our first real challenge of the run. A Flare Grunt tag battle with Callum that can be devastating. Steel Poison Garbodor and Steel Ghost Cough Egregious headline this showdown. Still, using a combination of Banette, Togetic, and Diggersby, we were able to clean up a potential run-ender with 
relative ease. Here we got to choose a fossil, so between Amaura, Tyrant, and Aerodactyl, I took the best one. Amaura was going to be excellent. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, they must have changed Amaura's typing or something. Wrong. This was the normal standard Amaro with some slight stat changes, and he was going to do numbers. Our final pickups before gym number two were Onyx, which was based, and Modest Halucha, who we named Gull. Still, I expected its typing to deliver something and brought the tandem to Grant alongside our starter meme, Cronaut, Big Lax, and you guessed it, Raymond. Yep, Raymond was back in the lineup and ready to shine. I told you guys I'd see it through that Raymond stayed with us, and now this was going to be his chance to prove himself. And who are we facing? Gigalith, Corsola, Aerodactyl, Cradilly, Tyrantrum, and Agron. Holy gym number two. So I opened with our goat using adaptability Leech Seed to suck Gigalith a little extra. Obviously, adaptability does not actually affect Leech Seed, but isn't it cool the monkey has adaptability? I then spiky shielded with Raymond to chip Aerodactyl once it came in. And then the rest of the fight went wildly smooth. We dominated Grant and we were off to Geosenge and Reflection Cave. We added a Hariyama and named her Biscuit. And I think it's important we talk about that Wubat encounter a little while ago. Because there was a good reason to get Wubat as well. Since we picked up the big swoo, we were now guaranteed to encounter either Ferrisseed or Matang in this next cave. Those were the only three encounters that could fall from the ceiling. Nola the Ferrisseed was destined to carry this run. Now, Reflection Cave is a gauntlet, and there are multiple double battles. Everything is trying to push your Pokemon above the level cap. It gets brutal and freeze. Let's play who wants to be a millionaire. You guys see the floor. The question is, what happens next? A, streamer hard switches into a sock check. B, streamer outspeeds and kills. C, streamer takes his time in this fight. D, streamer doesn't realize sock is speed tied with Heliolisk and rolls a completely unnecessary coin flip, causing Crocs to potentially take a close combat to the dome. Comment now to lock in your answer and subscribe while you're at it, please. Roll the clip. All right, both switch. We're faster. We're not faster. How are we not faster? That doesn't make sense. I misread. We were speed tied. That's right. If you chose D, that's messed up. And you should have believed in me because, because now I'm upset about it. And I'm revoking the cash prize that I promised. It's okay. The rest of the cave went really well. And we got out of there uh, basically deathless. Why? Why would you shadow sneak there? That doesn't make sense to, to physically do. You should eat this. Are you f serious? That's so un f believable. Why? It's f Grumpig, so like who gives a shit? But what the f Biscuit held down the fort, but this was one of the first plays of the double battle here. More bloodshed had to come and my friends were scrambling. Meme was in trouble and I didn't want to let Biscuit go either. She was fighting so hard. With the death of Dodrio, Empoleon took the floor for our opponent. So I sent an Opportune the Crab and Biscuit once more. Playing bait, I was able to invite two attacks on Opportune as Biscuit drain punched. Opportune didn't make it, sacrificing herself to let Biscuit finish the penguin with a second punch. Thank everything for our chunky friend and with Granbull on the field, I made a brutal mistake. I had Biscuit use Protect, allowing Granbull to bulk up. The fairy fighting type saw kills now on both Arabelle and Biscuit. What was I supposed to do? Granbull picked his player, taking Biscuit to the grave with him on his way down. Our buddy died a hero, letting the run continue to gym three before gracefully resting. We had to do this for Biscuit. Picking up a horde encounter on Route 12, I expected to see Mareep. Nope. These were the water type starters. Commit murder on four, take one home. The thing is, the AI manipulation that Protean Pokemon are capable of is far more valuable than any of the amazing buffs that each of these guys get in this game. Gimme Froki, Starstone was going to be epic. I then fished for Chinchu, who wasn't a Chinchu at all, actually. This is a Remorade, and now a Moody Octillery. Unreliable, but a hilarious weapon of mass destruction if I get lucky enough. They also stuck a poison type on this fella for a little extra juice. It was now time to avenge my previous loss by smacking Corinna. Moto the Bonnet was super broken here, sapping up fighting moves with its ghost normal type and cuffing opponents with Will-O-Wisp. Corinna might have the most unspectacular team of any of the leaders as we coasted to our third badge victory. And at the top of the Tower of Mastery, we were gifted not only a Lucario, but also the custom Megite X. This Mega Stone gave every single one of our Pokemon with Mega Potential the ability to Mega Evolve instantly. No specific stone hunts, no gate-kept evolutions. Mega Bonnet, Lucario, Steelix, 
and Blaziken were instantly online. The next big roadblock lied at the entryway to Ramos' city. There was a tough double battle, including brutally offensive Ampharos, Magmordar, and Choice Band Tauros. And it was time for one of our original six to go. That starter pack of Chespin, Swablu, Banette, the late Corfish, Bunnelby, and Pansage is going to be down to four. Okay, I'm in a really tough spot. I think I should stick to the plan. I think Magmordar goes for Confuse, right? No, no, it'll go for the kill. I think it's Scalds on the left. But I, I couldn't risk anything else. This is my best bet. Goes Blaze Kick. Yeah. Yep. Good night, buddy. Good night, Diggers B. You fought hard, buddy. That was the that was the planned sack. Ah, Diggers B. I'll miss you, buddy. That fight, this fight's just insane. And with that decision made, the team was able to defeat the remaining Pokemon and pave our way to the next routes. Before Ramos, there were three new encounters. Brezzi's the Lilip, Strubino the Piloswine, and Budding the Claydol. I'm not sure how valuable the three new employees would be, but we run a pretty tight ship here, so they'd better be ready to ball out. Ramos's team was weird. Meganium, Pseudo Wudo, Masquerain, Rotomo, I guess, Arbok, and I Mega Venusaur. Pseudo Wudo, Masquerain, and Arbok were all reminiscent of that Octillery on that one Volkner Electric team. Cycle the Scalopede played its role perfect here, poison jabbing the opening fairy type and pivoting so Meme could handle the Pseudo Wudo. After a whole bunch more pivoting, Cycle would go on a killing spree, taking Arbok and Rotom Mo down in back to back punches. And with only Mega Venusaur left, Acrobatics Hoovar took the stage. The big bat throttled the dog shit Dino Frog. I don't actually feel that way about Venusaur, guys. He's not dog shit. I just liked the alliteration. Four badges was half the game, guys. And sure, X and Y are notorious for their horrid pacing that puts the entire story between the seventh and eighth gym or whatever. But hey, four out of eight. That's half. The Kalos Power Plant, which has an electric soundtrack, by the way, was the next step in our Ancestral X endeavors. And in here, we would encounter one of our new best friends, Ty the Pachirisu. I love underdogs, and with fur coat, this squirrel was destined to be super respectable. This is also the building where the next 10 grunt fights would take place. All were mandatory, and all were incredibly brutal. Fortunately, we made it through eight unscathed before running into everyone's least favorite snake, Seviper. The real problem was that I forgot to equip iron barbs on Chestnut. I think I forgot to mention that after Gen 3 that we were given access to all possible ability changes. Probably important to note, but without Iron Barb's chip here, I had no way of punishing the snake on pivots. Plus, after a coil, I was in trouble. Matt the Octillery had to go, and devastatingly, so did Cycle the Scalopede. Rest in peace, legends. Scalopede had just won us a whole gym leader fight, so this felt really rough. Ah! And with that out of the way, we made it to the center of the plant where two grunt admin battles awaited us. The first one saw us challenging and punishing a Mega Gengar with Shadow Tag. The second, a Mega Banette who sought to play super hyper offense as well. Two box sinners down, no dead mons, man. Now, remember that Numel trade I talked about in the beginning of this run where I could trade anything in the game for it? Out with Furfru, in with Camerupt. Vesuvius was going to be excellent. Oh, Clements, who gave this child the coolest gym in the history of Pokemon? Small guy, big gym. Clement's team wasn't easy here at all. First, it was a double battle, which meant there would be so many things to account for. Second, electric types were already tough out. Rotom Wash, Thunderous, and Mega Manectric were going to be wild to try and take down. In the box, Raymond and Ty had become best friends. Pachi and Simisage opened up for us, hoping to break out some cool VGC strats as they went to work. Nuzzle slowed down Driftblim before Raymond snapped on Rotom Wash. Similarly, Ty's Super Fang into Raymond's adaptability finished Porygon Z as well. These two were the most talented best friends I'd ever seen on the Pokemon stage. Moreover, Raymond was able to Leech Seed Thunderous, while Follow Me Ty distracted the opposing legendary. Unfortunately, the time had come for us to break up our duo. Steelix took the floor, and Ty was just chugging hits. Hammer Arm from Thunderous? Delicious. Parabolic Charge brought back some HP before Pachi did this to Driftblim's Shadow Ball. Ty was now on the brink, so Raymond offered to take a hit. Now that was the best the monkey could have possibly done, so he popped into that Aurorus named One Hand that nobody ever thought I'd send into battle. And yet, there he was, staring down a gear grind clink clang. Absolutely the hell not. Vesuvius ate a hit for us before Mega Evolving and cranking out a mean heat wave, burying Driftlim and Manectric. And yeah, Mega Camera Up Sprite hasn't been imported yet, so we're just gonna stick this picture right here. There we go.
five whole badges in Pokemon X's hardest ROM hack. And we did it on the backs of Ty and Raymond. The insane synergy of our grass and electric types were coming to life. Boom, we got a Gengar, and we named her Lotus, as well as a Basculin that we definitely will send into battle. Now, the sixth gym leader is very, very close to the last one. In fact, it's only like 10 battles away from Clement. Valerie was on the clock and her time was ticking. Yet another double battle had me sweating. Still, I relied on Hoovar and Moto to pulverize the opening two mons. And then things got complicated. Yeah, the ants he was on the floor. Whatever, who cares? It's ugly and made out of rocks. I've never lost a fist fight with a rock before. Nine Tails, however, was repping an insane ghost typing in this hack. The dual typing made its offensive capabilities way cooler, but technically it did make killing it a little easier. After a turn, Knack the Milo was grasping on to dear life, opting to protect while Max heavy slammed the Deancey that was still on the floor. We needed one more turn, so Hoovar took Knack's place again, beefing through play rough and hex, and allowing Max to finish Deancey with heavy slam. And now, skill link Cincino. Holy hell. Wait, 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 I see the, I see the out, I see the out, I see the out. All right, I'm using protect, I'm pivoting to motto. Okay, acrobatics, nine tails. You, fake out, and Sincino. Sincino's got skill link. Please kill this, please kill this, please kill this, please kill this, please kill Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. Hell, yeah, dude. Holy shit. And with nine tails down and Sincino mega chipped, I swapped Arabelle in on Rock Blast and Will O Wisp to the Mega Mawile. Arabelle would bury the Cincino with Heavy Slam, and the poor final Megamon was absolutely incapable of standing up to the two bulk monsters left on the floor. Now, getting through the Pokeball Factory was no chore, but let's skip to the good part here. The ace of the building, Mega Aerodactyl, conceded defeat to Nola's Iron Barbs, while Swampert found the same wall similarly tilting. I mean, what was he supposed to do? A little motion from our team allowed Meme to get in on Big Swampert, where Seed Bomb would outspeed and finish the job. And right after that, Mega Tyranitar would fall victim to a similar fate, as Meme's might blitzed the god-awful Godzilla. GG's, Team Flare. The double Mega double battle was double over. And now, the Nuzlocke staple and legend finally shows itself. Welcome on in, Adamant Magikarp Emmy. This guy was gonna do numbers. Also joining the team, Jimmy the Magnemite. What a cute little guy. Frost Cavern was our upcoming destination, as we had a date with some Flare admins in its depths. We added Furcoat Dugong to the team, meeting Mabel and our brutal team complex at the pinnacle. Blissey opened, and Haxorus stepped in to obliterate our party Arlie. Simabear had Arlie's back and moonblasted the Hax. Suicune was now on the floor, so only the Dugong had the opportunity to debut. Parasong wouldn't kill the beast, but it would force it out and reset the Calm Mind it had set up. Arabelle thumped on Pheasant, and a leech seed from Nola allowed Oni to stall out the Suicune. Another Parish Song on the Spirit Tomb gave me a really cool opportunity to predict a switch into Mega Glalie. This was so important because Arlie was not eating anything from this Glalie. This was the only way to get in without taking damage or risking a loss. Down with Glalie, Luke the Altaria finished Spirit Tomb en route to a clean sweep. This was a complete team effort, and you had to be proud of the work our six had done. And now, one of the coolest additions to our roster ever, Stonked the Weavile. Technician and 60 base power punishment were going to hit like crazy. In Anastar City, there was a rival fight that we breezed over like the Baltimore Ravens breezed through the 2024 NFL playoffs. I hope this line is still good when I release the video, because I'm not taking it out. Lamar Jackson, I'm counting on you. Olympia was another gym leader double battle, and this time with the toughest Pokemon yet. Metagross, Victini, we needed reinforcements. Introducing our newest member of the team, Shredder. Shredder is a Sharpedo you can trade any Pokemon for, just like the Numel. We let our Swoobat go, who we unironically never used once, and prepared to dance on Olympia with our latest ally. It was time to get creative. Moto and Shredder stepped out. Shredder immediately buried public enemy number one in Metagross and fake out disoriented the Weezing beside it. And after catching that huge dub in just one turn, we benched our starters for Max and One Hand. Honestly, the two bulk monsters looked so comfortable on the floor, no, Lax wasn't doing a ton of damage here, but One Hand's Refrigerate Hyper Voices were hitting. But things are never really that easy, are they? Of course a crit, why wouldn't it? Leave my guy alone, bro. Of course a double crit. Are you f serious? All right, Max had to take a breather. That's fine. We have Mons in the back ready to take a punch. Nola guzzled that player off and Sludge Bomb, and Hyper Voice ended wheezing. Now, Umbreon was healing with Wish, but I didn't care. 
Victini was the threat here. I was never worried about what kind of damage an Umbreon was going to do to me. A very, very fun thing happened next. Because Weezing had set up Toxic Spikes, Shredder was poisoned on the walk-in. Victini would burn the whole floor using Searing Shot as its teammate Umbreon got burned with Synchronize. I didn't know that would burn the entire floor, but it would have devastated Shredder, except it was already poisoned, so it preserved its precious attack stat. Umbreon fainted, and Olympia sent out her next weapon. The problem now was that both Miss Magius and Victini wanted Shredder dead. I can't blame them. Shredder was carrying us here. So I played to my outs. I don't think you're going to get out of this death. Well, I'm going to try my hardest. Panda, thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. That's fine. Nice. Good damage. Alec has my kill with Phantom Force here. And I have a pivot after. Okay. Protect. Forest Sphere, Energy Ball, Phantom Force, Vanish instantly. You are in trouble. You're going to take 40 damage here? Yep. Okay. Don't show me the fire move, please. Please, 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 please. Don't show me the fire move. Show me Energy Ball from Victini. Aura Sphere is what I expected. Tell me I got this prediction right. I could Psychic use Energy Ball. Health. Yeah. Okay. Alakazam dies. All right. How much damage do I take on Moto? This is the third. This one does 40. Okay. This is the fire move from Victini. Did I click Spiky Shield? What did I click? I hope I clicked Spiky Shield. I did. Greninja has to eat one. That's okay. It takes Protean. Or it takes Life Orb damage, rather. Nice. Great. It's down real low. I click Dark Pulse. We win. We're faster. And we kill. GG's. Deathless Olympia, boys. Woo! Seven badges after some crazy turns in that gym. Honestly, it was really cool seeing Shredder make that much of an impact instantly. The team was so good and had so many weapons. I mean, we took down a Jirachi on Mabel's team in the hideout with real ease because we were able to find the perfect pivots to avoid taking almost any damage at all. And we took down Zero Stitch as well, maneuvering around its Mega Sharpedo to get out Deathless. It's a shame we now had a gauntlet of Team Flare double battles that we had to deal with, set up deliberately to thin the box of a prospective challenge runner. Miss, 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 please, 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 please. That's so sick. Bring my health all the way back. Nice. Nice. Come on, protect. Can you please kill the Gorbis? Actually, that was kind of bad. That's kind of not what I needed. Yeah, I think I lose. I think I lose my guy here. I mean, I guess technically I could get a double protect off, but I think Altaria dies. Didn't get it. Good night, Altaria. He fought hard, buddy. Death number eight has arrived. Spicky shield. Why would it? Are you f serious? Are you actually f serious? Dude, that's so fun. Close combat on the left here would be epic. Ah, oh, bummer. Dude, that close combat's gonna hit like a truck. I gotta let something die here. I don't really have another play. I just gotta be Cradilly, man. I mean, it could go Ice Hammer on Crobat, which would be my saving grace here, but I just don't see it. Yeah. Good night, Cradilly. Thought hard, buddy. What's it called? I need the rain to come down this turn. I'm gonna go to John on close combat. Okay. Here goes nothing. Okay. Don't get crit. That kills me. That f blows, but it's okay. And I know I just coldly displayed three deaths of some of our team members, but I couldn't just add our next guy to the pile. Three deaths to Pokemon we'd never really used was one thing, but now we had to say goodbye to Max, who was just moments ago carrying us through Clement's Tower. Rest in peace to the beast. We won't forget about you. Help. Help. Yeah, yeah, dude. dude. Holy, Holy shit. shit. We got Xerneas, who was nerfed in this game, to only have a 580 base stat total. Pack in the fact that I banned setup moves, and I decided legendaries were valid in this run because of how much they'd been muffled. Spoiler, Xerneas never leaves the box because it's not good without setup. The final fight of the gauntlet had arrived, Lysander's last stand. I had pre-burned Zangoose and planned for it to take out two Pokemon here. Axin, I'm playing your game right now, man. What's up? Hey, Peter. How you doing? 
Uh, I just remembered, the game heals you up before the final fight with Lysander, so don't worry about topping yourself off or anything. Good luck, bud. Shit. Well, call me Popeye, because I'm determined to steer this ship to safety. Simba Bear air slashed Ferrothorn, dismantling the spike setup in the process. I switched Meme in on Head Smash from Embor and got Emmy in to finish the beast. And Veltal was up. This was supposed to die to Guts Facade Zangoose. Now, conversely, life sucks! Oblivion Wing is a crazy move. It just does murder and then drinks the blood of its enemies. The vessel is feathers. That doesn't even make sense. Emmy did its best to mop up one of those attacks. Did it work? Sure. I have no HP. The plan had become to stall it out of focus blasts and move from there. The good news? We did it. The bad news? Protect is only 2 PP in this game, specifically to stop this kind of strategy. Good night, Takuru the Zangoose. Estribino now had to save us. I click Ice Hammer. And I just hope I don't get flinched. That's it. That's what this comes down to. Please don't flinch me. Here we go. I do this. All right, we lose Ruby now. Killing Nido Queen just got a lot harder. I'm so mad we didn't. We got healed before this fight. That's so infuriating. Unbelievable. Two Pokemon down. Rest in peace, Estrubino. Your contribution didn't matter at all because if Eltel had Roost and all damage is impermanent. Nola was able to stall it out still with Leech Seed and Gyro Ball, and Nido Queen now stared us down. Three Mons left on Lysander's team, things were looking grim. Queen and Nola traded Stealth Rocks for Leech Seed, and after a huge amount of chip, I switched Meme in to eat Earth Power, invoking the Citrus Berry our guy was holding and gaining even more health back from Leech Seed. Back to Nola on Sludge Wave for free, Dragonite hit the floor. Now, I was very confident it was going to Dragon Dance. It's worth noting that the move only has 2 PP for balancing purposes. Stealth Rocks dug into Emmy, bringing its HP down to just 8. No, it didn't fire off a move, it fired off Dragon Dance, but of course the Intimidate countered that. It was just one boost faster now. We were able to get Emmy out safely the next turn. Noli used Gyro Ball and Spiky Shield to whittle the beast away. Lysander's ace now stood center stage. I sent in the first Pokemon we'd ever got to do the job. Drain Punch put us in a safe position, and the run was officially allowed to continue. On the backs of Takuru and Distribuno, we had a chance to see the 8th Gym Badge. We fought Derek Shepard one more time in a silly triple battle, and picked up two more encounters. Kawaii the Quillfish, and Neo the Excelgore. And, contrary to what I was hoping, this game doesn't get easier as you get farther along. This upcoming bridge back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back battle was poised to be the toughest showdown yet. Yes, that's right, a back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back fight. Technically, we do get healed after the second fight, but getting through three 6v6 battles with the same team and the inability to change learn sets or items in between is just nuts. Nevertheless, I packed our six all-stars that had to take down 18 straight mons. Shauna was our first opponent, and honestly, that fight went fine. We powered through the first five mons, including a Mega Pidget. The final mon was Greninja. There goes nothing. Miss. Miss, 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 miss. Aw, don't crit me. Crit would be so BM. You're such a troll. You're such a troll. Fuck you. Please kill this. Oh my God. I actually, it is so unbelievable we survived there. The rolls to kill us were abundant. Yeah, Uh. so that was the first one. And now we had to get to fight number two with our beaten and battered team. And we were kind of screwed. I think this tail wins. Ugh, but if it Brave Birds, I'll be so sad. Most of the time, this cannot kill me with Brave Bird. And it's slower. I'm going Surf, I think it's the play. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. Okay. Um, That really f***ed with our plans. And honestly, the rest of our team had taken so many hits. This felt like it might be the end. So Hoovar can survive the hits that I need to survive. I have Nola and I have Emmy. I'm going to Mega here. And just kill this. Nice. Tailwind, you are slower right now. Mega Giardos. This is guaranteed crunch, right? Oh, this is brutal. Okay, here we go. Oh, don't die here. Hold, 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 hold. Thank you. Appreciate it. Tailwind petered out. Great. Should be superpower. It's the most damaging move. Don't crit me. Each life. Minus two now. 
Holy shit. Okay. No Tailwind up this time. Girofara comes out. This is Psyshock. I don't have a Dark type anymore. Yep. Keybolt. Heavy Slam. Yep, that's what I wanted. Thank you so much. Okay, Halucha comes out. It wants to use Boom Bop Bow. So I pivot into a Mon that can tank Boom Bop Bow. It went Sword Stance. For what? I didn't see a kill. I should have known that. I should have seen that. Uh, this is Brave Bird. I see my out. I go here on Brave Bird. Brave Bird. It's Life Orb, so it'll take damage after this as well. Ouch. I was now faced with a decision. Halucha was going to close combat, and Huvar could never risk a crit there, given how low its health was. The options here were simple. Choose one. Keep Emmy, our new fish with a mega form, and hope that it provides value as our only remaining dark water type. Or keep one hand, our dino goat, who'd contributed far more than any had expected of him. He took down Clement to earn us a whole gym badge, and boom bursted his way through two of Shauna's Pokemon just moments ago. Reality was... The choice was made up for me. I needed Emmy. Starstone had just fallen, and Opportune the Crowdaunt paid the price all the way back in Reflection Cave. The Serpent was the only one of its kind left. One hand, you deserved better than this. Oh seven. 7 Good night, brother. You fought hard. One hand's sacrifice allowed Huvar to fly them on to death, and U-turn pivot into Leech Life destroyed the incoming Crowdaunt. And with just Mega Ampharos left, Arabelle Earthquake crit. All right, that was a bit ridiculous. Fortunately, Nola ate a Draco Meteor and a Shadow Ball just fine, and the battle was won. We were healed. It was now a 4v6 after two of our most valued soldiers fell. Trevor, let's dance. Forges used Light Screen on Arabelle, and back-to-back -back Heavy Slams absolutely ruined Florges into Aerodactyl. Huvar obliterated a poor Breloom, and Raichu had no chance against Arabelle as he claimed a third body against our rival. Nola checked Tentacruel, and Arabelle went on for a final encore to defeat Mega Scizor with Fire Fang. A two-mon show for the entirety of that fight meant we were moving on. Fifteen lost friends hurt, but anyone who looked at our box would see we still had plenty of tools. And not for nothing, we still had a couple more encounters. I don't know what this maze of trees is called, and I didn't look it up, but we still had a honey that guarantees us a horde encounter which is cool. It was most likely to be a Zatu or Noctowl here, but there was a 35% chance we ran into a pack of fire starters. We got the 5%. We got a f Zygarde for the ice gym. <laughs> All right, that's not what I planned, but remember, this guy was adjusted to be a valid and reasonable encounter. This was it. I sent an Emmy to get an attack drop off and tank some hits, except now Aqua Tail wasn't killing and I was wrapped into the fight and Emmy! Raymond stepped in and stepped up, paving the way for us to catch the legendary beast. Just moments ago, we'd preserved our serpent for the purpose of having that super cool typing. Now, we'd cashed Emmy in for Mind the Zygarde. Rest easy, sweet prince. Still, Mind was a hell of a pickup, and if we could get through the ice gym that our guy was absolutely not coming to, we might be okay. Honestly, our Wolfric plan was pretty good. I felt very confident in our ability to take this one. Yeah, so my first turn is this disaster of an idea. Can I get the flinch? Flinch would be so epic and cool. Critical hit. Okay, focus sash. Ah, f All right, eat this. Breakfast. 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 Sharpedo, hold! What? Yeah. What? Oh, Okay, Arlie! <laughs> Hold, buddy! Don't crit, because I'll die. Okay! Oh, Shell Bell punishes me. Wait, that only does 12 damage. Drain Punch brought us back into the fight, and Wolfric's mysterious Licky Licky walked in. Look how ominous he is. We did so much switching, and Leech seeded so much health off this thing, we were able to finish the tongue with Arlie on the floor. This was super important because our check for the big beast needed to get in for free. And you might be wondering, who is the big beast at this point? Well, Mamo technically came out after this, but it got drain punched for the knockout. Curum White was that guy, and it was just too dangerous for Arlie to switch into. But with the stage set, close combat was enough. Wolfric sent in Lugia. This bulk monster was scary, but Nola was just too meaty for him. 
Are there any Pokemon in this game, by the way, that appear bigger than Lugia? It just looks massive. Look at it. Leech Seed and Toxic killed it. It took like a half hour, which is honestly a lot, and I'm not super proud of it. I have no idea how anyone is supposed to kill this thing another way. And then we encored Wolfric's Ace into Earthquake. The final team member of the eighth gym leader was down. We were headed to the Elite Four. Victory Road was a crazy time. The final rival fight was probably one of the biggest hurdles. Meowstic was pretty easy to check, and Chestnut had nothing on Simabear's elegant air slashes. It was a Blake Griffin versus Big Perk classic. It was cool seeing Budding the Claydol get some use up against Zeb Strika as well. Knack checked Flareon. Kawaii was hilariously successful to answer the final Mega Audino and clear the chipped Landorus. And then tragedy struck. This whole time, Ty and Raymond had been hanging out in the box together. Our openers for the Clement battle were inseparable, and while Raymond stayed home, I needed Ty's prowess for one more fight. Ty checked Dusknoir, which was its entire purpose here, but it was left with super low HP as Malamar stared him down. I needed Ty out, so I did what I thought any reasonable trainer would do in this situation. Ty, I know you're faster. Just use Volt Switch, buddy. I'm just faster. It has Sucker Punch. That sucked. It rest in peace, Pachirisu. Pachirisu, you were a f***ing legend, bro. You were really f***ing good for no reason. Didn't think you were going to be good, and then you were better than most of my other options all the time. The final boss before the Elite Four was Ace Trainer Axon, the creator of Ancestral X himself. Huvar conquered Gogoat as well as Armaldo, Luduculo sat on Delibird to suffocate the beast, and Raymond stepped back out to check a big Milo. The death of Ty would not be in vain if Raymond punched us a ticket to the Elite Four, and that he helped do. And the fish fell, so Nola stalled out Umbreon. Mega Gardevoir was the final Pokemon. All right, Quillfish, deliver the goods! Yeah. Barry Axon's best mon. Let's go. Axon, 07, brother. There were five battles left to define a Nuzlocke victory or Nuzlocke loss here, and there was so much that had gone right and wrong to get us here. 17 deaths, some more heart-wrenching than others, had left our box just a bit thinner than I had originally planned. It wasn't easy to choose, but after deliberating which of the remaining 25 mons or so to bring to the league, I made my decision. Mind and Knack were the first two, as the serpent behemoths promised bulk and consistency. Simabear and Nola were next, as both provided interesting and unique tech to the team. And then we had Ludicolo, the Agron who had the ability to Mega at any point in this Elite Four. And finally, the star of the show, we brought Kawaii the Quillfish. An imperfect closer, maybe, but Kawaii was exactly what this team needed. Malva was the first member we took on, and Thousand Arrows just pulverized the Fire Leader. It wasn't until Mega Charizard X came out that I opted to swap out of mind into Ludicolo. On that note, our deathless victory was sealed, and only four battles remained. Drasna was next, and mind opened just the same. The difference between this fight and the last one was that Drasna had plenty of coverage to thump mind. So after mind dropped Dragalge, the show was on the road. Draco. Oh no, I really did not account for this because I was like, there's no way this happens. No way I get frozen here. Thank God, dude. I would have been so salty. I would have been so pissed. No, oh, it does go flash cannon. I went competitive specifically for this. There's no way that Zygarde is only 600 base stat total. It is. I just wanted to make sure I was at as full health as I possibly could be exiting this part of the fight. Good night, Kingdra. Uh, I think this glares. No matter what happens, I'm in a good spot here. I'll just click protect the next turn. Yep, there it is. I went Cherry Berry. Cherry Berry. Protect. Yep, there it is. All right. Okay. Blue Flare always kills. Quillfish, I need you to hold, buddy. Come on. Hold. Quillfish. Stick it out, buddy. Yes. Yes. All right, Earthquake here. Good night, Rashiram. I think I just gyro ball. Call it a day. Cut my losses. Yeah, good night. This should be guaranteed fire blast. I got a Milo here. It hit. He's so floaty. That's true. 
Set up. Show me D-Dance here. Show me D-Dance. Yeah, dude. Fire Blast is still its most damaging move. Oh, it went Dragon Rush. Weird. I was trying to get the flinch. GG's. All right, Drasna down. After the fall of Drasna, we popped over to Wickstrom to slowly and methodically chug through his whole roster. Mind reached level 100, and the most challenging Elite Four member awaited us. Cybold, take it easy on me, pal. Poison jab. <clears throat> oh my god, dude. This thing's just a cannon, bro. This thing's insane. All right, Kyogre comes out, as expected, as expected. Lumberry for Rothorn here for this. Don't use Calm Mind. That would capital S-U-C-K. I would have loved to miss there. That's not how the rain works, I guess, but that's what I would have liked. Glad I went for that lumber here. Leech Seed. Oh, interesting. I didn't see that coming. I thought I would call mind. It's actually a little scary. I'm kind of in a really sticky spot here. Because I think it, I, it should set up call mind. I'm surprised it didn't. <laughs> don't crit me, please. Don't. No, 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 no. Okay. It's Kyogre's nerf like Zygarde, right? Yeah. Spicky shield. Is it hydro pumps again? Okay. The safest place to go Milo. There's Thunder. Yep, thank you. After the God of the Seas fell, we relied on Kawhi to finish Ludicolo and switched Kawhi in and out on Swampert to drop its attack to minus six. Big Pert was hitting like a wet noodle. Knack would ruin the Hoenn starter, as well as the ensuing Johto starter, and only had the Gen 1 turtle now to worry about. Mega Stoice was a steel type here. We were getting cooked. The most surefire way to kill this is to sack Quillfish. However, here's, here's the problem. Blastoise is gonna Mega, and it's gonna Steel Beam. Against Zygarde, if it crit, would have a 31% chance to kill. I don't think it's worth risking it, because if Zygarde dies, we lose the whole Elite Four, no questions asked. Everything sucks. So that's where I'm at. I cannot, I cannot, I cannot use that Steel Beam switch that I wanted to use here. There are a couple other outs that would allow me to get into Zygarde in a better situation. Number one being switching to Ferrothorn here. Actually, that's a lie. That doesn't help me at all. I thought that that would help. It does not. Sacking Quillfish allows me to switch into Aggron for free. So that is the easiest route. There's a second route. The second route is the one where we acknowledge that this is going to Steel Beam. Aggron is sturdy. So Agron would survive. Blastoise would outspeed and kill. There's a catch. It's got an Aura Sphere if it does that. And if it Aura Spheres, we can switch back to Zygarde. Now Zygarde does have an eject button, so that wouldn't be foolproof. It would Aura Sphere, and then we'd get a free switch. Probably Ferrothorn. We're going to Ferrothorn. Let's do it. I'm fighting to keep Quillfish alive. This is for you, buddy. You've done too much for me to let you go right now. <laughs> oh, no! This is a disaster! I'm keeping Quillfish alive! Aura Sphere. Okay. You gotta see the vision, boys. You gotta see the vision. Okay? I just need to see Aura Sphere one more time to preserve Quillfish. Please show me it. I wanna see it. Aura Sphere means Quillfish. Quillfish lives. Quillfish lives. Okay, 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 okay. Hold on, hold on. Breakfast, fight. Earthquake. Yeah! Hell yeah! Ah! That was for our guy! Diantha was the final opponent. Klefki, Entei, Keldeo, Rotom Fan, Zoroark, and Mega Diancie. If we could take down this team, we'd officially be champions of Ancestral X. Fire Blast Simibear was too strong for Klefki. Mind had Entei's number just fine. Knack covered Keldeo and mine stepped back into best Rotom fan and Zoroark, disguised as Deancey. The final showdown was between Nola and Deancey. Ancestral X is done! We've done it! We brought Quillfish to the Elite Four! I want to see Quillfish's induction into the Hall of Fame. The people's champion. Ah! Kawaii!
Guys, if you like this video, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and thank you to our Patreon subscribers. Fabio, Prita, Tyler, Matt, John, Reed, and Chad. You guys are the goats.